Hi guys and welcome back to the third and last uh, video on how to set up your own modular template in Cubase. So we've come a long way uh, so far, uh, but today we're going to have a look at uh, how to organize this stuff that we've made and uh, look at different configurations, maybe a couple of key commands, and uh, then I'm going to send it off to you guys and we're basically done. But hey, if we haven't met yet, my name is Tom Wood and uh, I run this channel called Sifter Studios. And on here we do media composing tutorials, Q-based tips and tricks, and sometimes freelance lifestyle talks. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Uh, let's have a look at what we have going here. Uh, be sure to watch the earlier videos if you haven't. At this point, we have done routing, we've done effects, uh, we've done like a master chain. Uh, our mixer is full of routings that we've set up. And we are now looking at how can we organize this mess uh, to something that's usable and makes sense, basically. So to do that, I am going to, first of all, control click one of the folders so that all of them collapses. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about configurations today. You can do configurations both in the arrange window and in the mix window. And we are going to do both. In the arrange window, we are going to add configurations based on the different sections of the template. So we're going to add one for strings and one for brass and so on. So why don't we just do that? Uh, it's really simple. I've set up a key command for hiding tracks that in my case, it's control H. So I'm just going to hide everything except strings. And I'm going to add a configuration and call it strings. <clears throat> ah, stupid me. So before I do that, actually, <laughs> I'm going to show all tracks. I'm going to hide the different folders that I don't want. So this affects channels. I'm going to hide. So this is everything. I'm going to add a configuration and call it all. Then I'm going to add another and call it strings. And the reason I had have the all configuration is the, so that I can really easily get to all of this and add brass and we'll just go through these all right i've set up these different things brass woodwind drums keys and synth and then sound design great um if i add another track in and i want to update uh, that uh, configuration, I can do that here, update configuration, and that can be very seamless when you're adding a new track. Caution though, when you are adding a new track, it will automatically be added to every configuration. So if you want to keep the project really uh, nice and tidy, you would have to go through all of these and update them whenever you add a new track. Now, my key commands don't really work because I've set uh, my keypad up to work with the quantize note value. Basically, I use my iPad for all of these things. Uh, but this is, I think, the standard key command for switching between them. So it, it can be very efficient when you're looking to have a tidy project. So that is the arrange window basically done. Before we go to the mixer, Let's add a new configuration. So we're going to add one for the uh, groups and master tracks, because sometimes it would be nice to add in automation or, and actually have a look at uh, what you've done <clears throat> in the range view as well as the mixer view. So I'm just going to call them groups. And for the last one, we're going to do effects. Now, if we want it, we could uh, add in a filter for the effects and the groups. So we could say that we don't want all track types. We only want effects tracks. 
and then we can update that configuration and we can do the same for the groups. So open them up and say that we want to show only group tracks. So at first glance, this isn't really doing anything, but if we were adding an audio track, it wouldn't automatically show up in this configuration. So just a little safety net. Moving on to the mixer. So for the mixing configuration, we're gonna do uh, a lot more with the filters. Let's add some configurations. The first one will be it's really simple. We'll add in all just like the arrange window. And then we will add another one where we only have instrument channels. Easy as that. Add another one, configuration called instruments. So this will not show the instruments that are deactivated. So once we actually start to use the, the template, uh, it's only gonna show the instruments that you have activated and that's gonna make this a, a lot more tidy. Uh, but we'll move on and say that now we don't want instrument channels, but we only want group channels. <clears throat> and we'll add a configuration called groups. Furthermore, we will have a configuration containing only effects tracks and now we will add another configuration called stems detailed uh, and in this view we will show all of the groups that have two equal signs in them so not the ones with one equal sign and not the ones with three equal signs in them let me show you. Let's go back to group channels, show the group tracks, and I'm just going to go ahead and hide the ones with three equal signs and the ones with one equal sign. And this is what we're left with. So this is stems detailed. We'll update that configuration go back to groups and start over. And this time we'll add a configuration called stems, stems condensed. I started doing the all caps, so I will have to go through and, and do this. Let me do this. OCD, I know. So condensed is gonna basically only have the three equals. Yep, that's correct. So in this view, stems condensed, let's update that. We'll see nine stems. And that's a lot less than if we go to group tracks and have a look at all of these. So that's the kind of workflow thinking that we're going to end up with maybe doing an EQ or adding a plugin or doing some automation on these tracks. And basically we can export all of these selected as uh, stems. It's just straight from the audio export mix down. And if I go here and select multiple, I can export these simply by doing three equal signs and selecting all of them and then exporting them. So that's the, that, that's the nice thing about doing these prefixes. And these tracks will be if, uh, for if I want to do a stereo bounce of uh, the track, if I want to upload it to SoundCloud, if I want to ex export it for Spotify or <clears throat> something else, uh, or just for a quick send off to the client, then I can do that with the stereo bounce as well. Let's jump back to the arrange window and for the configuration called all, I just want to update it to not show group tracks and effects tracks. So we have a little bit uh, left to do in the arrange window. I'm going to click this button, divide track list. And that is going to divide the track list. Whatever I put here will always be at the top, basically. 
I'm going to start with adding a ruler track. And I am going to select time code for this. And this way I can view both time code and bars and beats. And that's very helpful. Next up, I am going to add two marker tracks. <clears throat> I, and I'm going to, uh, this is, selects which marker track is active if you're doing key commands like this. And it's going to add it to the, the track that has the check mark. However, I want to uh, set one of them to musical time and one of them to linear time. And the reason why is if I want to mark something musically, like say after 16 bars, I need this and this to happen in the music, uh, then I need a musical marker track for that. However, if I'm working to picture or um, working by time and say that I want to mark at the 32nd point, uh, for example, there we need to uh, change into another key or we need to uh, we need the music to get happier at 30 seconds. Then I am going to put that in a time based marker. That way, if I change the tempo or end up doing something, uh, this will always show at that particular time code or time uh, and it won't get messed up basically. So I need two marker tracks at least. Furthermore, I like to have a chord track. And I use this religiously uh, to mark the different chords that I um, am playing. Because I like to have a, like a visual reference when I'm uh, adding or playing another voice in or I just like to have it there. So I'm going to have a chord track. I'm going to mute that chord track uh, so that it doesn't play when I have uh, a instrument uh, selected. Let's see what else are we going to add. A signature track so that I can add different time signatures if I want to. And I'm going to add a tempo track so that I can record different tempi. Super important. I am not going to add a video track because it's automatically going to add a video track when I add a video in. Uh, I am, however, going to add two audio tracks that I'm going to have always visible. And those tracks I'm going to name Dialogue Sound Effects. And then both of them are going to be routed straight to the EQ because I don't want to export uh, the dialogue from the movie or the sound design from the movie into the, the music that I'm sending back, obviously. So I'm exporting, uh, so I'm sending them straight to the output, basically. If the video adds another audio track, I'm just going to move it into the dialogue or as sound effects tracks. And I'm going to color these something so that I can recognize them. So we've now done the routing. We've done uh, the configurations. We could talk about a lot of different things, but what I would do from here on out would be to balance the template, uh, adding my own sounds, and then gradually start to test the template uh, and see where am I going to need more or less reverb. Uh, and that's really tricky for me to do in a way that's actually going to work for you guys. So I'm instead going to explain it uh, very quickly and then you'll actually have to do that for yourselves. Um, so here we go. Say that I added a short violin, uh, then I would find a like a reverb spot for that particular sound that kind of sounds natural to me. And then I would, for, for all the other ones that I'm adding, I would try to mimic the same amount of reverb for it to sound more natural. I then would kind of try to balance the output of that instrument, playing it a little and, and kind of finding the normal volume uh, and having a look at the, the meter <clears throat> for that the the output meter and tried to make it uh, sit around minus 18. So I've done um, 
Let's see, yes, we have. So this is at minus 15, so I would probably turn it down a little bit. Maybe up a little bit again. I've set up my outputs to change color once we pass minus 18. Let's see if that actually works. Yes, it's turn it turns red when it gets over minus 18. So uh, I would um, go through and balance it that way and also balance it with reverb. And let's check if that actually works by looking at the effects. It does, and it's routing to strings, high, short, beautiful. So the template is basically up and running. Uh, the rest would be, as I said, balancing it and making sure the reverb levels are somewhat similar. And you probably also should uh, adjust the levels based on the instruments themselves. So strings uh, will have a hard time fighting with full blaring brass. Uh, section and so you should keep that in mind as well and the best way to do that is to try to get your hand on some scores uh, that you can actually uh, input the information into the into the score and uh, just try it out we will maybe do that for a separate video and then i can export uh, and then i can give you guys that as well to make it easier for you to balance balance the template with your sound uh, but for now i think this is where we're going to stop so to summarize we have a lot of different configurations now working for us both in the mixer view and in the arrange view and we've had a like a, a an overall vision for what we're trying to uh, accomplish with the whole funnel uh, thinking of the tracks and it's going to make it super easy to stem this out uh, like once again, I'm just going to show you if I go to multiple outputs and I say I wanted to export uh, something with uh, a lot of detail, I can uh, enter in only one equal sign, and by then I would have to I would have to pick the ones that I wanted. But if I did two equal signs. Uh, it's a little bit easier and if I just want to use the standard stems that will be three equal signs and I can select those and just export them. All right, so this template I'm now giving you guys away for free. I am going to post this in my Discord server. Hi, Tom Wood from the future here. I'm editing this now and I was not able to upload this to my Discord server because there's a limitation on the file size that I can upload there. So instead, what I've chosen to do is to create a newsletter. I'll be able to send you guys some tips and tricks about this kind of stuff. I really want to create value for you guys. Uh, and I have lots of ideas of small things that I'll be able to put in the those emails that doesn't necessarily fit in a YouTube video, uh, like sh just short uh, tips and tricks for speeding up uh, your, you guys' workflow that I've learned over time doing it myself. Of course, you can unsubscribe from this any time you want. There is no, and it's totally free, but that is how I've chosen to distribute this project file. And um, that's gonna make it easier for me to uh, publish similar things in the future. If you feel like this is something you don't want to do, you don't want to give me uh, that kind of information, that's of course totally fine. Uh, I've just shown you uh, the way to do it yourself. So that's also an option if you guys want to do that. All right, back to the video. So this has been fun uh, to make this sort of uh, modular template uh, from scratch with you guys. Uh, if you guys have any input on what you would like me to do next, then please do let me know. I'll be back with a new video shortly, but uh, until then, remember that there is always gold in everyone.